Hi guys, so I almost made a big mistake a few days ago and I want to show you guys what happened and um, maybe you guys can use this in the future to avoid a similar kind of kind of crisis. Um, if you notice on the bottom right of your screen here, it shows pH over the last 48 hours. Uh, now, I, th these are African cichlids. I normally want to keep the, the pH around 8, maybe maybe even 8.1, but I had noticed that the pH kept falling. It, it dropped all the way down to um, about 7.65, and even though I was adding more and more of uh, Malawi Buffer, which is this stuff you see on the right, these are the three products that I use for maintaining the tank. Even though I would add more and more of the buffer, um, it did not affect the pH. So let's let's take a look kind of behind the scenes. This is the uh, Senai Probe. Uh, the, the, the Senai Probe is a small device that you put in the tank and it monitors ammonia, um, temperature, and uh, pH. And it takes a reading every, you know, every couple of minutes and it gives you a nice chart that shows uh, the different stats. And so I watched this chart very closely and you can set alarms around, you know, min and max values. I watched this very closely and so I noticed that the pH had fallen off and couldn't figure out why. So turns out that um, when you uh, see your pH falling off and you have a lot of fish, the first thing you should suspect is CO2 buildup. So I don't have any plants in this tank. This is an you know, African cichlid in Malawi Mbuna tank and it uh, does not have any plants. It has lots of fish and what had happened, what had happened is that right power head there you see on the on the you know just to the left of the word pH that power head has a pre filter on it and it had gotten clogged up and I had actually forgotten that it even had the pre filter because it's kind of hidden inside the the case and so I, I noticed that you know the power head was wasn't doing anything it was barely putting out any water so I took the power apart cleaned the pre filter put it back on and uh, you can see now what it's doing is it's basically blowing or, or moving around the water it's agitating the surface right there so that's that's allowing the co2 to get diffused into the atmosphere um you know they, so that that process of that single power head stopping working or you know it being degraded actually led to uh, a, a ph problem for me just that one device which tells me actually that i'm kind of on a razor's edge that there's i need more um once the sump is installed it has uh, a a, a wet dry system that will add a lot of oxygen to the water but right now I gotta be careful because there are a lot of fish in there if the CO2 builds up it will lead to um, uh, carbonic acid is what happens when CO2 is exposed to water it creates carbonic acid which reduces pH and which stresses the fish out um, so, so the answer here was to, to you know add additional surface agitation the, the takeaway though at least for me um, and for you guys as well, is the Senai device is really what is really what uh, helps you identify these kind of problems. It helps you recognize these problems early on. When you're dealing with this Senai device, it really doesn't matter what the number is so much as that the line is flat. You want that blue line that you see there. You want that to be as flat as possible. You know, a very little change in temperature, very little change in pH. Uh, you know, changing the temperatures from time to time is actually okay. It's the pH that you got to watch. You want to keep it as flat as possible. So you can see actually in the middle of the screen, the pH there, that little dip you see uh, right next to the orange line. I did a water change today. And so the water comes out of the tap here in Atlanta, Georgia at 7.6. But it's very soft. Uh, so I have to add lots of minerals and lots of buffer to get the alkalinity up in, in the water. So if I don't, you know, if I don't, want to do a water change if I don't add additional buffer to braise the alkalinity then the pH will will drop you know rapidly so uh, if you're having problems with co2 adding more buffer or adding more alkalinity to the water will certainly help guard against the uh, the effects of co2 on pH but what you really want to do is get some of that co2 out of the water uh, you know, through through surface agitation or you know uh, any of a number of other methods the sump can be used to do to do that uh, i just again i just move the water around with power heads that are facing upwards so um i hope this is helpful if if you want to talk more about how the Senai works or, or you know, how to interpret the information that the Senai shows you so there are a lot of other I've, I've been using it i've been looking at that data now for um i don't know a, a year 
and I've been using them extensively for a year. And I really learned how to recognize different kinds of patterns. You know, the relationship between, for instance, if you raise your temperature rapidly, you, you'll notice the fish behavior change and you'll notice that they eat more and that they, uh, they tend to spawn more. But you'll also notice that the water holds less oxygen and that CO2 will have a greater impact. The other thing you got to think about is that when you're watching that ammonia uh, chart, you know, looking at the uh, this top one up here, you see it's very low for me. I, my ammonia stays very low. If a fish dies and you don't know about it, maybe it's stuck in a cave somewhere, uh, that you'll see an ammonia spike or you'll at least see a bump. You know, your, your sump or your filtration might be taking the ammonia out rapidly, but you'll at least see a change. And you can see that my ammonia line for the last week is almost perfectly flat. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind with with cichlids, with uh, African cichlids, is that the higher the pH, the more toxic ammonia becomes, and it's a it's like an exponential thing. It gets much worse. So you know, soft acidic water uh, ammonia spikes are are not as bad. The, you know, the impact is not as not as great. But in like a, an Embuna tank, if it's the water's hard and the pH is eight and it's fully buffered, uh, ammonia is much more toxic. So you've got to watch that. You've really got to watch all of them. The one that I, I care least about is temperature. Uh, you know, temperature can vary, but pH and ammonia should not ever vary. So uh, here, this document, by the way, is really good. It, it, this is kind of my go-to when I need a quick refresher on how this stuff interacts. It talks about um, <clears throat> alkalinity and hardness and the relationship between alkalinity and, and CO2, uh, the, the time of day, you know, respiration, especially if you have a planted tank, has a lot to do with, uh, you know, the, as, the, as the plants consume CO2, uh, the, the pH tends to go up. But then at night, it tends to drop. And so there's some, some neat things that if, if you understand the process of the relationship between uh, alkalinity and pH and, and to a lesser degree hardness, if you understand all that stuff, it will really help you recognize and understand what's going on in the tank. And it will help you avoid problems. And by looking at the Sinai information, by, by monitoring, uh, you know, by mon actually looking at the charge, not just putting the probe in the water and then just walking away from it and setting some thresholds, but actually looking at the information closely um, will, will, will help you get a better understanding for how the parameters interact and what, you know, when you do things to the tank, what does it do to pH? What does it do to the temperature? And, you know, how often is your heater having to come on? And it's your, you, you see here that my temperature line is nice and flat. Uh, that spike there at the end, that, again, that's from the temperature change, uh, from the water change. The water here in Atlanta actually comes out of the faucet at about 78 and a half, maybe 79 degrees. So it's a little bit warmer, and it actually does raise the temperature of the tank slightly, but then it goes back down. So that's the kind of stuff that I know because I've been looking at the information for so long. So anyway, um, drop by the stream. Uh, you know, say hi I usually respond is I look at the stream chat many times per day so if I'm not around just uh, check back uh, otherwise good luck guys